Hey everyone, welcome back to the Flutter Wiz. Today I am thrilled to introduce you to the Flutter Video Feed app, a sleek open source project that brings TikTok style video feeds to life using Flutter. This app demonstrates how to build performant social media style video feeds similar to TikTok, Instagram Reels or YouTube Shorts. It showcases video handling, memory management and smooth scrolling using a MVVM architecture. Whether you are a seasoned developer or just starting out, this project offers valuable insights into creating engaging video experiences. Let's dive in and see it in action. So first things first, let me restart the app and see what we have. Okay, we have three different pages. Dashboard, profile and video section. To use the bottom navigation as Instagram or maybe TikTok, I put here. But profile and dashboard are not important a lot. We will focus on the video section. Okay. When I click video section, we will see some videos. Let's see. We can scroll. We can go back even. We can stop. We can play again. Yeah. That's it actually. So we have a nice architecture. We have a clear code base. I'm gonna explain all as quick as possible. So let me start from the main .dart file as always. We initialize the Firebase and then we register our dependency injector service. And then we just run the application. So let's go and see what is injection setup actually. So in the injection setup, we just register our services, maybe instances, maybe repository, qubit, etc. So we have a router, Firebase Firestore for our Firebase instance. We have video feed repository here and we have video feed qubit. Actually, that's it for the dependency injector side. And then we run the app as I said. So let's look our architecture. We have core, data, domain and presentation layers in core. We have the core files, interfaces, dependency injector, constants like enums. Okay. And in the data, we have repository, which repository? Video feed repository, of course. And then we have models in the domain and presentation at the end. I store my blocks and qubits, whatever it is, in the presentations blocks folder in here. I think it's so clear. And we have design system to be consistent all over of the app. And then localization if we need and wheels. Yeah, that's actually for the architecture side. So let's start with the basic one, Weaves. We have profile, dashboard and video feed as I said. Profile and dashboard are same almost. Uh, just the basic widgets. Dashboard also. But for the video feed, we have a lot of things. Okay, we have a lot of methods, a lot of things because we need to manage our memory efficiently. In almost every video app, there's a challenge about managing the memory you should keep the things performant and clear i explained all the methods above of the methods like this but let me explain quickly what we have done in here with just driving okay currently we have two videos right one and two and we are currently here this video okay so we want to scroll to next video and let's scroll we are currently here Okay, now here. So we have uploaded two more videos using that function. A lot more videos. So we have currently four different videos. But instead of storing all the videos, all the different videos, we need to cancel some things with least recently used strategy. Okay, so when we moved the second video, we uploaded third and fourth one, right? So we can scroll more. We can come here One. like this and you can see we have six video right now in our hands. But it doesn't mean that we have six different controllers because we need to manage the memory. So we need to cancel some things, right? We can't cancel fourth one. We can't cancel third one and second one. So we need to cancel the first one because it's too far away, right? So it goes like that. Think like we have five different pages. We are currently watching the first one. So that's okay. No problem about it. So we switch to second video. Okay, we are currently here. Let me show with another color. We are currently here. So we watch the second video. And that means we can go back or we can continue to scroll. 
So in that point, we need to store our first controller, second controller and third controller. But whenever we want to move more, let me switch the color like this. Okay. Now we have some other cases. We can move, we can go back. But here, as you can see, we don't need the first video anymore so that we cancel this. So we store second one, third one and fourth one. We store these ones. So that's the least recently used strategy. So we just cancel the oldest controller. For example, if I move here, this is the oldest, right? For example, when I want to move the fourth one, we are currently here. The oldest controller is now the second controller, right? So we need to cancel this and it's valid for going back. Think like, okay, let me choose purple. Think like we are currently here, okay? And I want to go to here. Let's go one and two. Right now we are currently here, okay? So we have one and three. We need to cancel the fourth one because this is the oldest one, right? So that's the strategy we use and we use it in our view, which view? Video feed view here. I know there are a lot of methods and a lot of things, but think like you need to really be careful about how to manage your memory because, okay, we have maybe 10 videos, but think like you have a million videos, okay? How to manage it? So that's the way, just a one way, of course. Uh, that we can use. I'm sure that there are a lot of methods and strategies to control the memory, control just the controllers that companies use. But for the tutorial purposes, I want to use that strategy. I think it's fine. You can glance at all the codes here. I explained, as I said, fetch the first two video, then load two more and two more and two more, maybe one more. It depends on our video count, right? So that's the strategy, okay? Now let me show the repository and qubit. We have two different functions, fetch videos and fetch more videos. So we are gonna uh, create these implementations in the repository here. So for the fetch videos, we call fetch videos helper. Why? I'm gonna explain. And for the fetch more videos, again, we use fetch videos helper because of we use common things, I want to create a private function here. Okay, let me draw. Fetch video says you are in the beginning of the videos and fetch more video says you are not in the beginning, but at some point of the video list. That's the difference, okay? Maybe you can ask, I can't see anything in the readme about Firebase Firestore. Okay, let me show the Firestore now here. Okay, here I have videos collection and in the videos collection we have some documents and each document have the same parameter. Okay, you can see I'm, I can explain all the things in here. For example, we have randomly comment counts is bookmarked is liked. I prepared these data uh, on my own and we have some profile image URL. Just an example. I can show you this for example. Okay, randomly selected and we have video URL here. I used Claude Dinery, uh, by the way, here. Uh, why? I don't know. I just got a suggestion from the AI so that I used here. Just a random YouTube short video. We may use Firebase Storage also. As far as I know, Firebase Storage is paid version, but I don't know. It doesn't matter. We have a video here right now and we fetch the video and show in here, right? So that's the architecture of our Firebase and all other documents has the same pattern. That's it for today's look at the Flutter video feed app. Huge thanks to everyone who supported the project. We just hit 77 stars on GitHub and I couldn't be more grateful. Thank you all. If you like what you saw, drop a like, subscribe and feel free to explore or contribute on GitHub. More Flutter content is on the way. See you in the next one. Flutterbees.